Hello and welcome to Busy Little Motor Home Company. Today I'm going to show you around Navigator ahead of your adventure. So the first thing that we need to know is that this vehicle is 6.4 meters long, 2.3 meters wide and 3.2 meters tall. If you've looked at the specification on the manufacturer we've had that little extra for the TV aerial on the top and the solar panel system just to ensure for clearance. So the first thing that we need to look at are the keys. When you're out on hire, you're given two sets of keys, both with navigator identifiers on them. Always keep them separate for insurance reasons. If they are joined together, then you are liable for the cost of the vehicle should it be stolen or go missing. So these sets of keys have the tracker on it. And this key is for everything back of the Ford for the habitation. And then you've got these keys, which have the Ford on it, and then the alarm system. So standard Ford key, press and it flicks out and you've got your open and lock on the front. And then we have got our alarm system. If you hold it, so the key ring is towards the back, you've got the small button with the dimples. We're gonna aim and press, and these lights here are going to flash, just like so. And then down here, we've got this blue LED light, which starts flashing for 20 seconds when it's arming. And when it is set, it will flash every 10 seconds intermittently. I will go to the controls inside um, in a moment. To turn it off, we press the same button again. That side light will go, and now it is disarmed. Now inside the cab, we're going to look at the driving column. First thing, my one with the tracker on. I always just pop this in the cup holder there. That needs to be within a meter of the driving wheel when you are driving. Otherwise, it doesn't register. The insurance company calls us, checks everything okay, we call you. If we can't get hold of you, the vehicle is on high alert and we can shut down the engine if we need to. So if we ever call you when you're driving, it is for that reason. So please always call us back. Or if you have just left this in the back somewhere or in a bag, just then always go and grab it and pop it in there. We have our other keys, forward, front, press, click, in there. Put your clutch all the way down to start the engine. I'm not going to do that now because it'll drown me out on the video. Then we're going to look at the steering wheel. It's just like driving a car, you're just that much higher up. We've got our indicators and high um, beam that side. We've got our windscreen wipers and our wash this side pulled towards. Then in the center of the steering wheel, we've got to answer the phone. You've got your volume controls in the front. And then you've got your cruise here to press it on, select and cancel, just like in most cars. In the center, I'm not going to go through this. You've got a radio. You've got the heating system, very standard um, items, just heating, aircon and stuff like that. The only addition up here, we've got somewhere to pop your phone. So I've got my phone handy here, push in the top and like that. The Ford systems don't come with sat nav. So I always use my phone for the sat nav here. It is Bluetooth, so you can stream your music through there. And then you've got your rear camera up here, which I'm just gonna turn the ignition on ever so slightly, just to show us and turn this radio off. And then up here, we can see that it is already looking at the back. So that is up. And if I turn into reverse, it goes downwards so then you can see right down when you reverse and it will do that automatically but i always like to have it on av1 so when i'm driving i can see behind me all the time then the next thing i'm going to show you is just these down here so we've got a range of buttons just in the motorhome here so we have got the red one at the moment it is on if you flip it up and it goes off it is off red means that the internal sensors are on you want them on when you go out for the day. So if anyone smashes um, a screen or a glass and puts their hand in, the alarm's going to go off. This blue one represents those LED lights on the outside. When they are on, they are on high, so that means they are projecting. So on a campsite, you really want that off. It just means dimmed. And then the last one, we have a bike loop. So it can be part of the system. And again, if that is down, it's on, and you need to have that plugged in. If that is on and you don't have it plugged in, the alarm's gonna constantly go off. So what we say, the bike one is usually off, unless you're taking bikes. And then these two down here, they're on when you go out for the day. When you're camping and sleeping in the night, you turn them off, so it means the internal sensors are off so you can move around. And the LED lights are low, so you're not gonna irritate people around you. Obviously, if you're wild camping, like we do quite often on the continent, you want them on high so people can see that it is a highly guarded vehicle. Then I'm going to come out the window towards our mirrors. If you feel you're going to catch those mirrors when you're driving, that is your sign to stop. You've got the habitation bulkhead here. So if you feel you're going to hit those, this costs a lot of money to repair, which obviously will come under your damage deposit. So we do ask if you feel you're going to hit those wing mirrors, do stop.
Now I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle. The first thing to notice, coming along the side, as we said, this bit sticks out a little. Always be very mindful of that when we're driving. So along the outside, you've got your windows and things like that. Then here we come to our first feature, which is our water. So out of the two keys that I showed you, it's the one for the habitation, which is this one on the tracking one. So just like a petrol cap, it opens, unlock it, and then it closes like a petrol cap. It's blue for the reason saying fresh water. Please do not get this confused with diesel. Okay, it's blue to match the color of water, which matches the color of the hoses we provide you with fresh water, okay? Only use our hoses. Don't use campsite ones because you can't guarantee they haven't cleaned their toilets with them. Our hoses in here, we tell all customers they are fresh water hoses. And then when you go to do the toilet situation, that's when you use the ones on the campsite. So when you're done, lock it, pop it in and it's done. Then on this one, we have got our hookup cable. When you're on a campsite, and of course you've got access to hookup, the cable in the back is the one with the flap that it goes in, and it actually goes inside where my hand is there. Then we've got a release button chest on the left here, and then you pull it to release. So when you are at a campsite, you plug in this side first, and then you plug into the campsite so it's not live when you're trying to hook it up, okay? Then we're going to move along. These are the fridge ventilation. We ask you not to clean the vehicles on your return on the exterior, because if you go to um, a jet wash center and if they jet in here, it's going to mess up the internal mechanisms of the fridge. Fridges are roughly around 4,000 pounds at the moment. And obviously that's a lot of money for a business to absorb because the damage deposit doesn't cover that much money and it would be an insurance job. So please don't have the external of the vehicles washed, okay? Then next on this one, we have our Truma extraction for the heating system and hot water so don't cover this up it does say on it it can get hot don't leave children around it um, and that is nothing you don't need to do anything with it but just be very mindful it's there and then we have our habitation at the back it uses these keys i'm just only going to show you how to open the toggles on this side so you pop the key in and when they turn the key it pops out towards you always turn the key back so then it means that you can open it really nice and easily just like so open the door close it and when you turn it you are then able just to pop it and it is locked because you've turned it and you've done that it means you can lock it and just located underneath here is your gray water waste so if you pull it and they can be a bit stiff you might need two hands pull it and then that will release water um, that is only from your shower and your sink. It's nothing to do with the toilet, but you do need to use designated areas on a campsite or a designated area in a service station. And when you are done, once it's all dropped out, it will drop out just underneath where this lever meets the vehicle. Push it back in, and then that will keep all of your grey waste water in the vehicle until your next stop. So on the back of the vehicle, there's not really a lot to tell you. We've got our cameras at the top, which you've seen demonstrated can either go straight out the back when you're driving or it can angle down for when you're reversing to see the bumper at the moment navigator does not have a bike rack fixed on it this is something that we ask if you want because it does obstruct the view going down and it does add extra onto the back which sometimes can be difficult to navigate if there is a bike rack on here you literally just undo the two clips either side which are black drop it down you've got your trough for the wheels and you've got the arms just like on a standard one fix them into place and then strap in your wheels, strap on the hooks, and then you're all good to go. When you're not using it, you fold it back up, turn the two black clips, and then it's secured. We do have these loops, which are part of the system, which I mentioned inside. And we can see in this bag that we provide you with, it does have a correct way around. And underneath in this corner here, there is a circle, and you just pull it down, and you pop it in, and then the wires. You've got the black connector here. Always pull only the black, not the wires, because it can come out and that will damage it. And then you literally wrap it around your bike as much as you can to get all that excess wire gone. And that means if somebody clips it, undoes it, or unplugs it, the alarm system will go off. The alarm system is very loud and you go in to hear it, okay? So we offer you these as a free extra, but we don't pop them in there because they are very expensive and they have gone missing because customers have said they haven't used them. So we now only hand them out on request. So if you're requesting a bike rack and you want to request an alarm loop, please let us know. Now on the passenger side of the vehicle, I'm going to show you in the garage. You will notice already this door is a lot bigger than the other side for the reason that the heating system sits on this part. So the door is a lot sleeker on the other side. I'm going to use our habitation key turn 
let it pop out, turn it back. Again, turn, pop, and turn it back, because otherwise what you'll find, you're trying to press it and, and figure out which way it goes. So we're going to undo the toggle. Over here, there is a latch, so if it is a windyish day, it's not going to come and slam on you. So then, in the back end here, we've got our hook at cable. The side where that the flap goes into the campsite, as I demonstrated with my hand earlier, this goes into the vehicle. Don't put it like that, because it will snap a brake. It literally goes in. Then we have got our hose pipe. So you can see we've got the end just to pop in the vehicle. And then on here, we have got a quick release already on there. And you've got that part to go on the tap should they not have it at the campsite. Please make sure you come away with those because, of course, it could impact you. Um, firstly, when you go to your next campsite and you don't have a quick um, valve. And, of course, then you won't be able to fill your water. But, of course, it could impact others um, if we don't pick it up when you come back. But we do always check, and those are the most common thing that we charge for. They're not expensive, but please try to remember, if you've used them, take them off. Keep them on the end so you know that it's always there. Then you've got your toilet solution. I will talk through this in a moment when we move forward to the toilet section. And then your garage in this one is a nice big garage. And you do have your window covers here, which is quite self-explanatory they go together one goes on the windscreen the other two come around the side to the side doors wrapping around the wing mirror and they clip up on the top of the door when the doors open and then you close the door we've gone for these ones on this particular vehicle um just because uh, on the ford we often find it is nicer to have the external ones um so we do have a range of different external ones but these ones are a lot more heavy duty than some of the others that we have but again, they're nice, and they will, in the summer as well, give you more um, reflection of the sun, which is always nice in the summer. So that's the back end. Just make sure you undo your clip, and then we will go close, pop, and pop, and then we're going to go and move forward to the toilet. So we're going to go open, and you do need both fingers, thumbs to open it, and then we are going to pull out the cassette, if the cassette was not to come out, that means the toilet is open. So don't force it because that will rip off the bottom of the toilet, which again is quite hefty. So if it doesn't come out, just go into the toilet. There is a slider which we'll go through very shortly. But this has come out. So when it is full, wheel it along or hold it to the point on the campsite to empty. Pull that up. Unscrew the top. I've got a little friend here. Please ignore our lovely dog coming over, Oscar. Um, and we have got it in the position ready to empty. This is the airlock button. Hold your face back. Here he is. <laughs> he is roaming along. And then aim down, face away, press the airlock, and it all comes flying out. That blue solution goes in the top. So once you have emptied, but on the first point when you do start your adventure, you fill it to the top line with blue, pour it in there little bit of water to get it reacting then you close the top put it in and then you're good to go so always use the hose pipe on the campsite for this do not use the fresh water hose that i've just showed you in the back okay hello oscar um so that is the toilet compartment there and while we have lovely oscar here this is not a pet friendly vehicle okay so this is our friendly little poochie around the site but this is one of our non-friendly um vehicles of in regards to pets so when you're done make sure it's locked um toilet cassettes are quite expensive if people have experience that they have lost theirs or theirs are broken they could take it which we have had in the past then we're going to move forward to the gas same key again let's open it when you are traveling the gas does need to be off you can see on the door here it tells you which way is off which is clockwise anti-clockwise is open so I'm going to open this so then we have that on to show the system inside. It comes with two. If you're on a long trip, these two will be full, completely full. So if you're on a two-week trip, they will be full, full, full. And if you were just out for a weekend, you will have what's left of one and then a full one. All you need to do is this part here. You don't need to touch anything else on the pipework here. If it does run out, make sure the gas is off. You have a spanner. Just undo the bit on the front hose like you would do on a gas barbecue. Undo it. You don't need to move them around. You can then put this on the next one at the back. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then you can turn the gas back on. So I'm going to leave that on for now. But always make sure it is off when you drive away. Then we've got our habitational door, which we're going to go in. Same key again. And we are going to go through there in a moment. But the last thing on the outside of the vehicle, on the Ford, 
you have your diesel and your ad blue here you need to open the door and you need to open these to be able to access them and obviously close them so your passengers don't get filmed at the fuel station and it does say diesel okay so if you're not sure it always will say on the collar there diesel they come full of diesel please return them full and then add blue you will need to top that up before you return and we will have another video for that um following this one welcome to the interior of navigator this is a lovely compact motorhome with a double up here and a double at the back which i'll show you in a moment but first of all we're going to go to the control panel to get it working we're going to press the home button and it's going to come to life and then you will see there are some options on the screen. So we've got resources to start us off. Engine battery is on red. It's been sat here for a few days. Come back off higher. That will go up when you drive. The leisure battery is working off the solar panel system and it is on green. We have no fresh water and that is represented by the red and the zero. And the wastewater tank is clear and on zero and that's represented with a little hole on the bottom which represents it dropping out of the bottom when you empty it. We've got some switches here. We've got the water pump. That's going to gurgle a little because there's no water in here, but usually it'll do that and then it will um, pressurize the system and stop, if you can hear that. And then we have got outdoor light, which is just outside the door here. And then we've got the interior lights, which there are different lights around the vehicle. I'm going to leave that on for now. Then we have got a room climate. We've got ventilating, which if you go in there, It'll bring some fresh air from the outside on the warmer days. If I click on it, you can see just plus it. And I usually go all the way up to 10, otherwise it's not worth anything. And then that will circulate some air. Turn it off at the top there. My fat fingers, I can't do it. Got to point a little. And then room climate heating. I've set it, well, I did set it to 20, but it's already warm. So I'm going to go up that little bit more. And you can see we're set to gas, which in here, if you click on it, you can turn gas off. Turn the power on. Some campsites don't have brilliant power, so sometimes you need to use both. You'll figure that out when you're somewhere. And then you can see here that it is pulsing. That means it is warming. When it is red all around or it's matching temperature, it means it's at that temperature. And you can see that the power is on, the gas is on, and it's on fast, or you can have it on comfort. When you finish, turn it off by pressing that little one in the corner there. With my fat fingers again. There we go. And then it is off. Um, don't leave that on all the time because it will use your gas up. If you're on a campsite and electric, no problem. But if you forget and you go out for the day and you put on gas, it will drink your gas up. System for hot water is exactly the same. Turn it on. Same situation. It's set to long shower. Please be careful with children. But they do use the mixer tap because it does come out at 70 degrees. For the reason it's a long shower, it is intended that you use the mixer with it. The same situation with gas and electric hookup. You choose which one you want and the water pump is on and that's everything in there to finish turn it off just in the corner there notification center there's nothing in here at the moment but if you do have something it will tell you what's wrong whether it's the window is open so the gas won't light um tell you whether your gas is running out or low that the pressure is low on it and then you scroll and you clear it when you're in there when you finish turn it off and turn it completely off and you do that before you go outside and turn the gas off or unhook the um, hookup and make a habit of that because that's when you get error code. So if you don't do that and you go and pull out your electric hookup and turn your gas off, that's when you get error code. So make sure before you leave somewhere, turn the panel off, go outside, unhook up, turn your gas off and then drive. The opposite when you get there, before you come and turn this on, get your hookup going or your gas or both and then you turn it on. Then you will not get error codes. There is a TV above here, just always make sure it's in the stowed position um, so it doesn't swing out when you're driving or likewise when you lower this bed, it can take that out. We do just like to give an indicator about the TVs. There are bonus um, extra in our vehicles. They are not part of what you're hiring if they don't work due to the area you're in. Um, unfortunately, we're not refunding any money due to that. I would like to think you're here with family and friends and you're going to have a lovely adventurous time or you have some things um, already stowed on your phones or on your devices and these are just a little extra. They don't work, we cannot guarantee that, so please do not contact us asking for money back because these are an optional extra that we put in the vehicles. If you are stuck to a TV and you're that kind of family, bring DVDs so you can guarantee they will always work or as I said, have them put on your devices. So away from the TV, we have the rest of the vehicle. So in the kitchen area here, we have got our three ring hob, which works off gas. 
which you just press and turn and it ignites and obviously when this goes down as it says do not put it down while these are still hot because it will shatter and explode um, so make sure they are cooled before you pop that down you've got the oven here which oven turn this way ignite it and that will ignite the oven which we have the flame then at the back and then the opposite way oh, we have got our grill hold and press and i can see looking down at the bottom there that the gas is on for the grill which is at the top and i'm going to turn that off so those are powered by gas because these vehicles are meant that you go and don't necessarily go to a campsite all the time so that is why they're controlled by gas You've got some cleaning products here to start you going in the cupboard just make sure nothing has moved when you stop and then you've got your fire extinguisher fire blankets on the side there with your oven gloves and things all the bits and bobs in there for cups plates side plates bowls kessel cafetier and glassware which is um the plastic kind then we come to our fridge here um it is flash at the moment which i've done on purpose um so if you ever get it and you've left either the engine stopped before you go and hook up or do your gas it is represented by an error by flashing and a red light so just turn the master button off and then it will go blank when you turn it on then it will go blue representing it's okay and it's done automatic and it's found gas and it's on full cool we ask you to leave it on automatic so when you are driving it will change to the battery kind one if you're on a campsite it goes to the flight to represent hookup when this is done it will go off and it only is represented that is on by that little blue light this goes off to save energy just like everything in the motorhome um, you have some blue light led buttons here you press that this light comes on the same under each side and you've got light switches just by the door for the other lights in here in the kitchen most of the things are stowed here you've got your pyrex dishes your pots your pans utensils this is a hidden drawer which we often get calls about where's the cutlery because it looks like a nice fat shelf everything's in there for you everything's listed on inventory which our guys check before you go out this cupboard is empty there's nothing in there and then of course you've got the fridge just push like that that way nice storage there freezer at the top and then part of the drawer is cooling too so come into your beds we've got the bed on the back here we always give you two pillows two microfiber towels and a duvet this bed up here the items are stored in there same duvet two pillows two microfiber towels and both ladders are kept at the back so then when you're driving if you break they're not going to come flying forward the small one here is for this bed at the back you can see it's got toggles to secure it in place so those are open pop that there we can toggle them and then you can climb in it is advisable when you're not using the bed to have that out of the way because you cannot open the fridge drawer and when that's there and just when you're driving pop it up there out of the way and then the large one has hooks on the top which will go in on top of the bed there there are two storage up there you've got windows blinds and example there nice black up blinds there we've got fly screens there every window has blinds this kind they are the pull down kind and they stop and they go up this one unfortunately is broken at the moment it will be replaced but that is just to show people how they can be easily broken we ask you not to let children use them we are changing all of the windows to this style so perhaps by the time you come this one is going to be replaced because they are breakable easy so if you are using them please adults only touching the blinds and screens um, in the motor home then into the loo i'm going to crouch down here so in this particular vehicle um, it has a standard motorhome shower toilet setup. We have this in a lot of our motorhomes. They are like this to save space. Um, so then you have more living space. Obviously, this being a compact motorhome, they have put all of the space saving stuff they can in here. So we've got the toilet. It does turn to make life easier. You've got this bit, which I mentioned earlier on. If that cassette does not come um, out, it does mean that the toilet is open. So you just do that. And the toilet now is in open position. So that way is closed and you can see in the bottom there, the slider opens and you can see down into the pet. The rule is when you're going to the loo, always have it open and then the rest of the time it is closed for traveling so it doesn't come sloshing out. The reason it's open when you go to the loo, if you do something on top of it and then you slide it open, actually it will go in the cassette underneath and you're going to need to clean that out. And I have experienced that and it's not nice. Um, we've got some toilet rolls to get you going there. You've got storage at the top. That shelf actually does open the storage inside there too. And then you've got your flush. It's not like a normal toilet. It's just like a swirling spray. Um, 
and that's the toilet section um, done there for you. And then I'm going to come inside here and stand in the very corner and then we've got the shower. So you need to take the wood out of the floor, place that out somewhere and then you can see that L shape. This glass screen does need to come around when you're showering just to make sure the floor is protected. Motor home floors are quite delicate. So when you're showering, always make sure that is closed and in place. Then to form your shower, you've got the tap, which also doubles up as your shower. You pull it out on the hose. On the top, there's a button two ways. So you can see it's a spray for a shower or it works as a tap straight out and you just press those on top. For showering, it just goes up on the top here into this little cradle. And when you're finished, just feed the hose back in nice and gently. And that is back then as a tap and always make sure that you stow the shower door because it is glass so obviously if you leave it rattling when you're driving it could smash and that is everything at the back of the vehicle so we're going to have a swap and then show you the front end okay so in the front we have these two seats that are now turned they are done by this little bit here which comes forward and you do have the normal long bar which stays on the back end so for example on this one i can slide this forwards and backwards by going like that and then this one once it is turning it does not lock until it's all the way back around so you can see so we can turn them nicely we can press the end of this table pull it this way and it can go really centered so we have someone dining there here and there the travel seats of those two seats they have seat belts so they are the only ones you can travel in these it is a travel fall you cannot sit in the side seat you do have to be buckled in and facing forward when you're traveling on the wall there are the usb points to charge things and then we just have the bed above so the bed does come down and these come down with it when i was away recently um i was in this one but there is one with another front exactly the same and we were able to still sit around here while i put my son to bed up there so if i come over here we can hold this button make sure the tv is stowed which it is press the button and it will come down and just glance that everything is clear there's nothing on the table like a wine glass which i have done in the past and that's blown into pieces and then you've got your bed pop the ladder on there and then come up you've got a light up there if you do have small children you can put this wafer up this cuts onto the ceiling there are points all around it myself i've never used it because uh, my children and myself have never rolled up to bed it's got quite a high edge so when you come to the edge you you do just naturally not fall out if you do use it just please do be mindful that it is not like a playpen it is an anti-roll anti system if you leave your child up there playing and use it as a playpen it will give and they will fall out and we will not take responsibility for that they are only sleep roll um wafers okay when you put it up make sure your bedding is off because it can get entangled in the mechanisms it does need to be all the way up in the stow position for when you're driving otherwise it can come unsecure and jiggle and then obviously you won't be able to use it so make sure the bedding is back in the cupboard everything is out of the way of the mechanisms and it is completely the way up in the lock position so that is the show round of navigator hopefully that has cleared up a lot of the questions you might have ahead of your adventure but if there is anything you're not sure of please ask the guys in the date they will be more than happy to show you in person how that works while you're out you have access to the videos you can email us or call us in the daytime and then at night time if it states that we are closed we still answer emails but we are also on the whatsapp group which is our landline number so out of hours whatsapp our landline it goes to all of us just like our emails and someone will always be on hand we do ask after at 10 o'clock in night it is emergencies only that isn't i can't get this to work it is that unfortunately there's been an accident of some kind um which touch wood we've been really lucky with but after 10 o'clock it is emergencies only so please make sure that you're set for the night you've got everything you need and then after 10 o'clock it is absolute emergencies but we are there to help so that is it from me have a lovely adventure and we hope to see you very soon all prepared raring to go for your journey on the road